On the 22nd of May, General Museveni addressed the nation about the rising cost of living. He, however, did not offer any kind of relief or solution to the citizens, but instead he advised Ugandans to tighten their seat belts. Well, on his part, he continues to spend public money as if he's not aware that the country is suffering a price shock. Between November 2021 and April 2022, prices of household commodities increased to levels which, which are way, way beyond the reach of the ordinary citizens. This information is on the Uganda Bureau of Statistics website, the UBOS website, and it's available for all of you to see. Therefore, fellow Ugandans, for us to arrest this situation, government must go back to the fuel market. And yes, government must do the following things. Number one, government must impose control on stocking levels and pricing decisions. I mean, no responsible government continues to just cry and lament on forces of demand and supply when the petroleum supplies act allows the government to do something we think government through the commissioner of petroleum supplies which is actually the legal licensing authority should split the average cost of every liter of fuel into three categories and go ahead to publicize them for the consumer and ordinary person to understand and appreciate the changes that are happening first the unit cost of delivering a liter of fuel from wherever it's coming from to the borders of Uganda. Secondly, the tax per unit. And third, the margin, the, the margin of profit per unit. Now, every liter of fuel, whether petrol or diesel, has a unit cost. A cost of bringing it to the border. It could be Malaba, it could be Busia or Mutukula. For example, a liter is brought from the refineries in the Middle East up to Busia at a cost of, uh, for example, 2,800 shillings. And this is the first level of costing. Now, the second level is tax. So you add the tax on that 2,800, which, I mean, is brought on our borders. The third category is the profit margin. Now, this is where everything goes wrong. The fuel companies are setting a higher profit margin while the consumer has generally accepted to be exploited. I mean, the companies are setting whatever prices they want while the regulator is quiet. This is not a mistake, ladies and gentlemen, because the same people who are supposed to regulate are actually the same people in the fuel business. So they cannot regulate themselves they also do not break down and publicize all these details in transparency for you, the common person, to understand because they want to exploit you in ignorance. Number two, we think the government must abolish fuel marking because this is a useless exercise which was only useful in the years before customs computerized cargo tracking. But today, it only holds and delays trucks at the border for nothing. And number three, and most urgent and important of all, is government must suspend taxes on crude vegetable oil and wheat. This will help to reduce the prices of essential items like chapati. The ghetto people in our cities, in the towns and the trading center, the centers largely survive mainly on chapati, which also makes chikomando and makes Rolex. And this policy, this policy decision is very urgent and indeed long overdue. Let's forget about this business of Museveni 
coming to tell us to eat cassava if we can't afford bread. I mean, cassava or cassava flour cannot make chapati. It cannot make shikomando. Therefore, it cannot make Rolex. But that goes ahead to just show how disconnected Museven is from the people. Now, you're going to ask me, how do we deal with the revenue lost by removing tax from vegetable oil and wheat? My answer is simple. Cut the classified expenditure in order to accommodate the revenue loss created by a tax exemption on the cooking oil and wheat. Simple. Chuchiba chitedede. Now about the failure of government to deliver public services. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ugandans, the NRM government has failed twice. It failed to raise enough revenue to support the fast growing population and it has also failed. I mean, it has outrightly stolen and unfairly distributed the little revenue that is collected. The NRM party, because of selective application of tax policy and administration, the, tax, the taxes collected are not matching the reported size of the economy. The economy is expanding to higher levels, while the few people that are taxed are taxed exorbitantly at high tax rates. Now, this is a comparison of Uganda's average revenue expenditure as per GDP with other countries in our league between 2016 and 2020. Uganda has revenue collected as a percentage of GDP. The revenue collected is 13.1. And total expenditure as of percentage of GDP is 17.4. Rwanda has total revenue uh, collected of 23.2. Total spending is 27.5 Kenya revenue collected 17.4 total spending 24.8 Senegal revenue collected 19.9 total spending 23.9 Zambia collected 19.2 spent 28.1 now this is information coming from the International Monetary Fund the economic outlook database of April 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Uganda has been held hostage by an old man who has no idea whatsoever how to grow domestic revenue without increasing tax rates. Kwegamba Museveni has no idea whatsoever on how to make everyone who earns income pay an equal and proportional share of their income tax.